Okay, welcome and thank you for joining us for the Arlington Main Street Redesign Initiative public webinar. I'm Jackie Hakes, Director of Planning with MJ Engineering, and I will be your facilitator for this evening and one of your presenters as well. I'm joined by my colleagues this evening, traffic engineer Chad Schneider, who will also be presenting, and planner Andrew Gilchrist, who will serve as your webinar host. At this point, I would like to take roll call of the study advisory committee members that are serving as panelists for this evening's webinar. Supervisor Bailey. I'm here. Mark DeBald. Here. Emily Dozer. Here. Robert Legacy. Here. Ann Shershin. Here. Kristen Taylor. Here. Dylan Tuttle. Here. Mike Welty. Here. And Carl Whitehead. Here. Okay. I do want to thank the committee for your efforts throughout this study. It, re it really is appreciated. And um, uh, we're glad that, to have you join us this evening. I would like to do a quick review of the agenda for those of us joining us this evening. Uh, first of all, I will talk through a kind of a webinar how to so that uh, participants that are joining us will understand how you can participate throughout this evening's webinar, um, including how to submit questions for us to be able to help answer. We will do a welcome uh, with, from several of our study partners. And then I will go into a study overview, give you a little background about the study and the goals, and then turn it over to Chad Schneider to walk through the preferred concept um, for the redesign of Main Street here in Arlington. We will then walk through next steps and then, it's, and then it's over to you as the public to ask your questions and provide your input. In terms of the webinar how-to, uh, there will be several interactive polls throughout this presentation and we do encourage you to participate. Uh, the idea of the active polls is to keep this as interactive as, as possible and we do want to hear from you and understand who is joining us this evening. We will break to address questions at the end of the presentation. There are two ways that you can pose a question to us. Number one, in your Q&A function uh, in your webinar Zoom, uh, your Zoom webinar panel, you can type in a question. The other uh, way to participate and ask a question is to use the raise hand feature. We do have our uh, webinar host, Andrew Gilchrist, We'll be managing and monitoring those questions as they come in. And so we will be taking those again as they come in at the end of the presentation. Following the webinar, if you have additional comments or thoughts, we certainly want to hear. Uh, please submit them via email to dctc at duchessny.gov. That email address is on your screen. In addition, a recording of this webinar will be posted to the study website which is shown on your screen. With that, I would like to turn this over to our study sponsor, Mark DeBall from the Dutchess County Transportation Council for a brief welcome, Mark. Great, thank you, Jackie. Uh, again, uh, my name is Mark DeBall. I'm the MPO director for the Dutchess County Transportation Council. And as mentioned, we are sponsoring this study in consultation or coordination with Dutchess County uh, and Town of Poughkeepsie. And so we're excited to present these concepts uh, to the public. It's the product of a lot of work and an analysis and uh, like to gauge uh, everyone's reaction to this uh, and uh, like to thank the town and the county also for their participation in this study. Thank you, Mark. Supervisor Baisley, would you like to provide a brief welcome? Yeah, I want to thank everybody for partaking in this study today. Um, this has been a long road. We've gone down a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts have gone into this process. And we're hoping the outcome is a very walkable, friendly, traffic friendly community that we can turn Main Street into and make it more of a hometown look as opposed to a highway feel. I want to thank everybody involved, the county, the state, and MJ Consultants for what we've done forward. And I really want to see from the residents and the people involved tonight that they really have the say going forward so we can go back and take that back and readdress some of their issues 
and hopefully come out with a fantastic project. So again, thanks everybody for being involved tonight. Thank you, Supervisor. And Commissioner Robert Volkind will, uh, we, is expected to be joining us a little bit later this evening, but the County Department of Public Works has also been a study partner throughout the duration of this process. Now, before we get too far into this presentation, uh, we do want to, to know who's joining us this evening. And so we are going to have a series of interactive polls uh, coming up. Andrew, if you could please share the first poll for our public. Um, what we would ask of you as members of the public is to simply select the choice or choices that work best uh, or that apply best to you. Um, we're asking how you relate to the Main Street Corridor in Arlington. Are you a business owner, a resident, a visitor? Do you go to the shops or restaurants? Do you drive, walk, or bike through the corridor? Or are there other things that bring you to the corridor here in the Arlington Main Street? I'm gonna give folks just a few moments to uh, select your answers before we close the poll. And then we're going to show you the, the live results. So you can also see who is joining you on this webinar. All right, we'll uh, give you just another couple of seconds. Okay, Andrew, let's go ahead and close the poll and let's post the results, please. Okay, it looks like uh, um, folks relate to this corridor in a variety of ways. 75% uh, go to the shops or restaurants, as well as drive, walk, or bike through the corridor. 46% um, of those uh, joining us are residents. 14% uh, have identified as business owners and 11% as visitors. Another 11% um, come to this corridor for other reasons. All right, Andrew, let's go to poll number two. So for this poll, we are asking, when you last visited the Main Street Corridor here in Arlington, uh, have you been here within the past day, within the past week, within the past month, or has it been longer than one month since you last uh, uh, visited this corridor? We will give folks just a few, a few more seconds to uh, select your answer, and then we will post the results. All right, Andrew, let's close this poll and post the results, please. All right, so based on uh, the results of those joining us this evening, um, a good majority of you have been here within the past week and, and or the last day. So 45% of, of those joining us have uh, visited the corridor within the past day. Um, I believe that's 48% uh, within the past week and 10% in the past month and 6% of you uh, have not been here in more than a, a month. So um, thank you for that. And we have one last poll to find out a little bit more about who's joining us. Andrew, let's bring up the, this next poll, please. All right, we'd like to know what you did do on that last visit. So those of you that were in the corridor within the last day, the last week, even within the last month, um, what did you do while you were there? And please select all of these choices that, may, that might apply. Um, did you shop, visit a store, a retail establishment, patronize a restaurant, walk through the corridor, drive through the corridor, um, or have you just not visited the corridor at all? We'd like to know. All right, we will give you just another couple of seconds before we close this poll and show the results. All right, Andrew, let's go ahead and, and post, uh, close this poll and, and show the results. Okay, so it looks like 61% of you joining us shopped or visited a store or retail establishment on your last visit here. 26% uh, patronized a restaurant, 19% just simply walked through the corridor. And 74%, a pretty significant number, uh, drove through the corridor. And 6% indicated um, another reason, uh, another op, op, uh, action on your, your visit there. And um, not unexpected, but uh, none of you joining us this evening 
um, or everyone joining us this evening has visited the corridor at some point in time. All right, so those are our participant polls. Thank you, Andrew, very much for that so far. And it's helpful for us to know um, who's listening in and, and who cares about this corridor enough to be joining us this evening. Um, we are glad to have you with us. And uh, I'd like to provide a, a brief overview of the study at this point in time, uh, particularly some background as to why the study is, uh, why we were engaged to do this study. Um, uh, it goes back to the 2017 Arlington Town Center pedestrian plan. Uh, within that plan, there were several recommendations focused on this particular corridor. Everything from intersection improvements at Maine and Grand, uh, Maine and Raymond, Maine and Fairmont and Taft, as well as overall improvements to the Main Street corridor. Um, it, everything to include in, in, in improve the walkability, improve the convenience and safety for other modes, uh, looking at public space and parking as well. The study goals included the following. Number one, to create a detailed implementable concept design for Main Street. So again, this is a next step from that 2017 Arlington Town Center pedestrian plan. So taking, taking those ideas, that vision for this corridor, and taking it the next step to see what could be implemented given the current right of way, given that it is fairly built out at this point in time, and understanding what that might look like in terms of improvements. Another goal is to identify issues and costs and the actions needed to make this corridor a complete street. And a complete street is a street that is accommodating to multiple modes, um, vehicular, pedestrian, transit, and bicycling. The other goal of this study is to position the town and the county to pursue federal and state funding for the actual design and construction, the implementation of this concept over the next three to five years. To accomplish this, there were four tasks that were identified for this particular study. Uh, the first task involved a data collection. The second task involved an evaluation of existing conditions so we know where we're starting. Uh, the third task involved public engagement across the board and we will talk a little bit about what we have done for public engagement throughout this effort. And then the final task is the concept evaluation and the final plan. And that is in progress. And that is why we are reaching out to you as the public today to share with you that preferred concept uh, that we have been working on with the committee and various stakeholders. I would like to introduce you to the study team uh, that has been facilitating this process and guiding this process. Um, those folks that we're on the roll call at the beginning of this. They represent your study advisory committee. Um, there are representatives from the Dutchess County Transportation Council, the Dutchess County Department of Public Works, various representatives from the town of Poughkeepsie, including a town board member, your supervisor, uh, folks from the planning department, um, as well as representation from the Arlington Business Improvement District, your Arlington bid. Um, in addition, our team here at MJ Engineering has been providing the technical support for the study advisory committee for this effort. I would like to briefly review what the study area is. The study area is that corridor of Main Street reaching from the intersection of North and South Grand in Maine all the way to Taft and Fairmont. Um, and Main Street. So that study area is, um, you know, that area is our study area that we are evaluating for the, the concept that Chad is going to be sharing with you in just a moment. In terms of the study process, as I mentioned before, with those four key tasks, we did an existing conditions analysis, everything from uh, collecting traffic counts and bike and pedestrian counts. Um, we did a capacity analysis. Uh, crash evaluation, understanding safety concerns. We looked at the existing zoning and land uses to understand how those are integrated in with the traffic uh, and transportation uh, functions of the corridor. And we looked at parking as well. To gather input from the public, we did utilize a variety of public engagement techniques 
And I do want to point out that these uh, this public engagement took place in the fall, primarily the fall of 2019. And so this was a time when we could still have um, really valuable in-person conversations with folks. Um, and so we had a series of stakeholder group meetings sitting around a table around some maps with a variety of stakeholders, including various town departments, uh, business owners within the corridor, um, commercial uh, businesses and entities along the corridor, uh, representatives from uh, from Vassar and uh, student representatives. In addition, we also had an online survey. We had over 250 responses to that online survey, which was also available in Spanish as well as English. And we had three pop-up stations. So we went out into the community at three different times at three different locations including the Arlington uh, Street Fair, the Farmer's Market, as well as in the parking lot of Davies Hardware. We had a variety of committee meetings and um, the committee offered really valuable input all along the way. There was coordination with uh, the Dutchess County Transportation Council along the way, as well as coordination with the Dutchess County Department of Public Works and the New York State Department of Transportation. I would like to pause for a moment here and find out from those of you that are joining us if you had the opportunity to participate in any of the engagement opportunities that took place last fall. Um, Andrew, if you could please bring up the next poll. Um, let's find out if folks were able to participate in, in any of the stakeholder meetings, the online survey, or did you visit a pop-up table along the way? Um, please identify all of those uh, options that apply to you. Okay. All right. Um, Andrew, let's go ahead and close the poll and let's see uh, if anyone had a chance to participate in any of the engagement activities. Oh, great. So it looks like folks were able to participate in um, um, several of the engagement opportunities. Um, let's see, 33% uh, percent took place in a stakeholder meeting, 37 uh, participated in the online survey, uh, just over a quarter stopped by one of our pop-up tables. It does look like there were a handful of folks at 33% that did not uh, engage in, in the previous engagement. So we are glad that you are here with us this evening. All right, Andrew, let's go ahead and close that poll. And we are going to move on to the preferred concept. So. Uh, Chad is going to walk us through the process of how we got to the preferred concept and then share, share with you what the preferred redesign concept is for Arlington Main Street at this point in time. All right, Chad. Thank you, Jackie. So the first step in this process was to go out and collect the existing data, whether it's traffic data or dimensions of the existing roadway. Um, those were some of the things that we did start collecting early on. As you can see here in the cross section of the existing typical section, uh, there are some areas of the sidewalk that are about four feet wide. There are some that are much wider in, in, in front of some of the storefronts as well. Uh, there's also an existing buffer strip that varies in um, treatment and also width throughout the corridor. Um, and also the travel lanes and parking lanes vary as well. Uh, the parking currently is not delineated. Uh, there are there is some limited signage in, in the corridor regarding where, where parking is uh, allowed and where it is not. So again, the, the pavement section right now ranges from 40 to 46 feet, depending on where you are within the corridor. So we took a look at this and said, okay, with, with the area that we have between the two um, highway boundaries, which is the, the property lines for the roadway itself, we started to look and said, okay, what can fit in here? And at the same time, we were looking at all of the design standards that are required for a road such as this and uh, the requirements for the lane widths and the, tra and the parking lanes and also uh, requirements for sidewalk widths and, and, those, and those elements that, are, that you see here today in this section. So from that, um, we looked at, like I said, we looked at the uh, design guidelines and figured out what 
is required for, for uh, Main Street. And from that, we developed two draft concepts. Those two draft concepts were then reviewed by the committee and also Dutchess County DPW. From those discussions, we just say we figured out which the preferred configurations would be from each of the two and then determined the preferred concept elements. And all of those preferred configurations and preferred concept elements were then combined into a preferred concept for the entire corridor. The two draft concepts, we only looked at a portion of the corridor to get some feedback on what was preferred to use throughout the entire corridor. The first concept that we came up with was draft concept plan A. This maintained the existing signal at North and South Grand with some pedestrian signal and crosswalk improvements. Uh, we also added some curb extensions where we could on Main Street to shorten the crossing distance for pedestrians and also to increase their visibility to uh, people in vehicles as well. Uh, it also helps improve the safety for the pedestrians. Um, we maintain the existing sidewalk and buffer strip, so the existing curb line would remain exactly where it is. Uh, we did, however, make the travel lanes a consistent 12 feet in width. The parking lanes were a minimum of 8 feet, uh, given the current width of the roadway. And there's some areas where they do get a little bit wider, but they, they don't get any uh, more narrow than 8 feet. And this concept also included a continuous uh, parking lane delineation along with parking space delineation as well. Um, and we, we looked at some mid-block crossings throughout the corridor at some locations that did not have uh, signalized intersections. Uh, so some of the challenges we had in here was, was the uh, offset nature of the North-South Grand Avenue intersection. Um, and one of the other goals of the project was also to provide a gateway feature coming into Arlington at North and South Grand. So what we looked at was a mini roundabout and to in an attempt to, com to accommodate the offset nature of the intersection, uh, we used the roundabout, but we made the center island uh, uh, elongated to accommodate that offset. Um, so throughout the corridor, this concept included the reconstruction of the curb and the buffer strip, as well as um, widening out the sidewalk to a minimum of six feet in width to allow more room for walking and, and people passing each other and, and make it a little more comfortable for pedestrians. Um, this concept uses the minimum lane width for a road such as Main Street at 11 feet, and that is held consistent throughout as well. Um, and the parking lane is a consistent eight feet also. Um, we did change the parking delineation a little bit, going from the solid white line to the T configuration you see here in the picture below. Um, and we did place some continuous uh, edge line delineation where parking was prohibited. And again, we had the mid block crossings and the curb extensions from the concept plan A was carried through this concept as well. So after looking at these, there were some concerns about the turning movements of some of the bigger, larger vehicles that use the corridor at the North and, Ground, North and South Grand Avenue intersection. And what we're using here is a 30 foot uh, single unit truck, uh, your basic uh, box delivery truck. Um, so the left turns going east and west in the picture on the left go over the center island, but the north south lefts uh, end up going in front of the center island. This was not really a desired um, movement to have in this area, create some confusion, and could possibly require the, the trucks to wait longer and, uh, and not allow traffic to move as efficiently as we would like. One of the other options we looked at here was if we maintain the existing signal, what other, what kind of realignment options would we have? Uh, so we looked at in the red, if we maintain the North, Ave, North Grand Avenue alignment, 
South Grand Avenue would have to be aligned with it. And, and the red lines show what the travel lanes would look like in this picture here. The dark blue uh, shows if we maintain the south and realign the north while also realigning the road a little bit to, to better tie into the arterial to the north. And then we wanted to look at something that would that would help minimize property impacts the uh, with the moving the north alignment to match the south alignment. So that's where the light blue comes in. So we bring we, we maintain the existing North Grand Avenue alignment and then as close as we can to the intersection, we start shifting it over to line up with the South Grand Avenue approach. So what we did so based on those two concepts we determined what the preferred elements were and from that we developed the preferred concept for the entire corridor this incorporated the committee uh, duchess county department of public works and also new york state dot comments uh, during this process we coordinated with the duchess county public transit regarding locations that they were looking at for proposed bus stops um, we reviewed the preferred concept with DCTC along with Dutchess County DPW. And then we refined the preferred concept just a little bit more to make sure we, hadn't, we were getting what, we, what everybody thought was a really good uh, concept. Um, as far as the North and South Grand Avenue intersection went, uh, it was determined that we should start with an ideal design that would accommodate as many vehicles as possible. Uh, so that is why we revised the mini roundabout from the elongated version in the in concept B to what I'm going to show you um, on the next slide. So the preferred concept key elements, we revise like I like I mentioned earlier, we revised the Grand Avenue intersection roundabout. Uh, there was a consistent width of uh, 11 feet for the travel lanes. Parking lanes had an eight foot um, minimum width. Uh, the length of the parking stalls were 20 feet if you're on the end of a block or 22 feet if you're, if you're in the middle um, to allow for ease of getting in and out of the spots. Uh, the T parking delineation was, was preferred. Um, Delineation of the parking allows for more efficient use of the available parking areas. And it was determined that we wanted to provide continuous delineation where parking was prohibited to for whether longer distances to help uh, drivers know where they should be within the within the pavement section. And we also included uh, flexible pavement treatment. And by that, we mean, you know, you can either fully reconstruct the road from curb to curb, or if necessary, uh, mill and overlay a certain part of it while widening certain sections and rebuilding the curb and the sidewalks. Uh, we did this because it's unknown what type of funding is going to be obtained for this project. So depending on that funding, there's a little bit of flexibility uh, with the cost of the project between those two treatments. Um, as I mentioned earlier, here's the preferred concept at the North, South, North and South Grand Avenue intersection. Um, this is still considered a mini roundabout. The diameter for the traffic within the circle itself is about 80 feet. And the minimum or the maximum for a mini roundabout is about 90 feet. Uh, it's important to note that the right-of-way impacts for any of these treatments we're showing today will require some further investigation uh, during the future phases of the project. And uh, as stated before, the bus stops are also, were also coordinated with Dutchess uh, County Public Transit. Um, as you can see, the, the, the one public transit stop that's shown here does go across the driveway, but the bus would not be stopping at that location. This would actually remove two parking spaces where the bus would be parking. Um, the other part is to allow for the bus to park at that location. Um, other elements shown here are sharrows in the road, 
uh, shared lane markings, uh, they're also called, to let drivers know that the bicyclists would be in the lane uh, since there isn't a separate bicycle facility within this corridor. Uh, and those would be supplemented with, uh, with signs on the side of the road, also letting drivers know that uh, bicyclists would be in the corridor. Um, so the, the roundabout here has an apron on the outside. The blue shaded areas would be raised islands. Um, the area in the center of the roundabout just outside that blue shaded area is what we're calling the truck apron. So in case a larger vehicle like a tractor trailer combination does come through here, they would be accommodated and be able to maneuver through this intersection. Um, so again, we looked at the turning movements. The turning movements shown here are for a 40 foot bus. Um, and as you can see, they can maneuver through this intersection without encroaching on the center uh, truck apron. And we showed the, again, we showed the, the left turn movements from the east and west, as well as the north and south, uh, similar to what we did for the previous roundabout iteration. Moving on down the corridor, this is the uh, Street Avenue to Jones Street section. As you can see, we've added the delineation along the edge of the road where parking would be prohibited. The no parking zone is more of a call out to show that that's where parking would not be allowed. That would not be painted on the roadway. Um, again, we're carrying the Sharrows through. We have the 11 foot travel lanes, the eight foot parking lanes. Uh, we've added some street trees as well, uh, as well as some pedestrian lighting um, to make it a little more comfortable for the pedestrians when, when you're walking, when it's, when it's a little darker or, or, uh, or overcast out. Um, and again, we showed, uh, we have some cross or some mid-block crossings shown here as well. Uh, those would be signed at a minimum with pedestrian ahead signs and pedestrian crossing signs at the location. And there could also be installation of uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons as well to help bring attention uh, to this location since it would be a, a location that would not be anticipated by drivers or pedestrians would be in the roadway. Uh, moving on down the corridor, we're going down to Raymond Avenue. Uh, since this intersection was, was recently reconstructed, our work would be tying into that. Uh, we would be do, redoing some of the buffer strip areas um, leading up to the intersection on the, on the east and west sides. Um, again, we carry the lighting and the trees through as well as the sharrows um, and maintain the widths that we discussed earlier as well. Um, I'm gonna go back one slide real quick. And one thing I wanted to note at this intersection is right now there is a pedestrian phase where all the all signals on all the approaches for vehicular traffic go red. That would need to be reevaluated in future phases as well, uh, based on the need and the volume of pedestrian traffic in the area. Um, the results that we had from our data collection show that that might not be uh, required. So that would have to be looked at in a little bit more detail uh, during future phases to determine the, the need for that. And also coordinate with New York State DOT since that uh, intersection is under their jurisdic jurisdiction. Uh, moving on down the corridor, this is the stretch from Fowler Avenue or right around Fowler Avenue. Um, and again, we carried everything um, very similar throughout the corridor street trees, the lighting, uh, the T parking delineation, and no parking areas and the, and the, um, the delineation along the sides. This is another location for a mid block crossing. Um, there is some access control that we are applying through this corridor as well. Um, there is some access that uh, if restricted would help improve safety at some of these intersections and, and throughout the corridor and allow for a little bit of additional parking and uh, curb extensions to help increase safety for pedestrians walking through uh, the corridor. And the same signing uh, would be applied at this mid-block crossing as well as, as the one previously noted. 
Um, the current signage for the Route 44 and Route 55 uh, to the east at Taft Fairmont would need to be updated. Um, more signs would need to be added additionally um, a further distance from the intersection so people know which lane they should be in once they get there to help make that intersection a little safer as well. Uh, and that could be in the form of another overhead sign structure or uh, something that may be sized a little bit more appropriately for, for, a, for a town center such as this with some, with some roadside signs. Those would have to be located so that they would be visible to the drivers and some thought would, will need to be put into that when uh, this project is progressed during future phases. Uh, Taft and Fairmont Avenue. So we looked at this as well. Um, what we came up with again was, you know, update upgrading of the signs, put another sign on the far side of the intersection as well. So people going through the intersection will know where they need to be. Uh, we wanted to widen the lane on the east side going to Route 55. Right now it's, it's a little narrow for, for this area. Um, so that would also help increase the safety on that side. Uh, we introduced a raised median on the west side that will serve purposes of channelizing traffic through the intersection, slowing down people turning, um, as well as allowing for a gateway feature to be installed within that, uh, within that raised median as well, like a sign, like a welcome to Arlington sign or something of that, of that nature. Um, and again, we carry the street trees and the street lighting and everything on through this area as well. Um, one thing to note, the, we also looked at a roundabout at this intersection as well. And with that, um, we looked at a full-size roundabout. So a full-size roundabout, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, ranges from about 130 to 150 feet if, the, if it was to accommodate um, your typical tractor-trailer combo. Um, not really fitting for this area, and also we had some challenges at this intersection. Uh, the proximity of the diner uh, on the top left and also the previous restaurant on the bottom right. Um, close proximity of those two buildings makes it a little challenging to fit this in there. So again, we looked at you know something similar to what we have at uh, North and South Grand. This is the same footprint that the other roundabout has at with a uh, what they call an inscribed diameter. It's the uh, it's the green. It's the larger of the green circles where traffic would be driving inside the the roundabout itself is 80 feet across from one side to the other. Um, and again, this would be this would be able to accommodate a 40 foot school bus within the roundabout lane and not using the interior truck apron as well. And one of the reasons we wanted to look at some of these is for a few reasons. One of the reasons is there's the current arterial study going on right now. Uh, we're not sure if any of the findings from that would have an impact on, on what's being done at this intersection currently today. Uh, and also funding. Um, again, like we discussed earlier, not sure the funding availability and, and what would actually be obtained for, for this project. So in order to have some alternatives uh, to be able to fit within those budgets and that those are the reasons we're looking at some of these other things today. Um, and some of the other challenges we had here too um, that need to be considered in the future phases are the, the, closer, the close proximity of the arterial on the south and also on the north at this location and how any roundabout would, would work with traffic signals in that close of proximity. Um, so after all of this, we went through, this is what the final cross section would look like for the for Main Street along the corridor. Uh, you have a six foot minimum sidewalk, it would vary. Um, in front of some of the storefronts, it would be wider. Um, but that would be the minimum would be six feet. Uh, we'd have a four foot buffer strip in that buffer strip would be some uh, street furniture in the form of uh, benches and, and some other elements as well uh, that would be grouped together. 
um, to help with snow removal in the winter and uh, reduction in, in damage to those elements during those times. Uh, again, we have the eight foot parking, the 11 foot travel lanes, um, and we carry that through the corridor. The, um, the potential existing pavement treatments would be either a full depth reconstruction or mill and overlay in the, um, in the hatched areas in the middle where the solid areas on the outside would, would include full depth reconstruction to allow some flexibility once the funding is obtained. Um, and again, the pedestrian level lighting and the street trees uh, would be located in the buffer strip. So with that, I will turn it back to Jackie uh, to go on to the next item. Well, thank you, Chad. Um, so we know that uh, that was a lot of information that we just provided to you, but Chad summarized the preferred concept um, fairly clearly on that last slide. And I, I do just want to point out that while we did look at potential roundabout at Taft and Fairmont, uh, the preferred alternative does include um, that traditional signal with the improvements that Chad had outlined. But we want to hear from you briefly before we move into the next steps and then the Q&A um, following the presentation. Andrew, if you could please bring up the poll. We'd like to know from those of you that are joining us this evening, do you think this preferred concept will improve the corridor and your experience along the corridor? Um, please select which uh, makes the most sense. Um, yes, no, somewhat, or you're just not sure. We, we'd like to know um, where you are in terms of the preferred concept that was just presented to you. We will give you just a, just a couple more seconds to be able to share with us what your initial thoughts are of, of this preferred concept. All right, Andrew, let's go ahead and close the poll and share the results. Okay, always uh, waiting with bated breath when you ask a question like this, but it looks like 63% of those of you joining us this evening do feel that this preferred concept will improve the corridor and your experience along the corridor. 10% have identified no. Another 20% have identified uh, not sure if it really will make the improvements. Um, and then 10% say not sure. Um, so thank you for that, Andrew, if you could close that. Um, what we would like to do is to share with you a little bit of the next steps. And for this, I am going to turn it over to Mark DeBald at DCTC. Uh, Mark, would you like to share what the next steps are in this process? Great, thank you, Jackie. Uh, excellent presentation. Uh, so for next steps, uh, what we typically do in these types of studies is hand the recommendations or final report uh, to the town and county, the likely project sponsors who would try to actually implement uh, some type of project here. We do want to finalize the final concept and final plan this fall. Uh, so we are going to try to wrap this up fairly shortly. Uh, and then so uh, we would work with the town and county to progress either parts of this or the entire project. Now I will say, of course, this requires funding. Uh, likely it requires outside funding. There are federal programs in particular that can uh, assist towns and counties in progressing these types of projects. And that one of those funding streams is called the Transportation Alternatives Program or TAP. Uh, and there is a uh, statewide solicitation or call for projects uh, that we're hoping uh, that will occur this fall. So it actually will line up nicely uh, with wrapping this study up uh, with a potential call for projects for funding. And we'll work with the town and county to see what we can uh, try to accomplish. And uh, you know, it, using federal funds is not easy, uh, but we would work definitely with the county and the town uh, to see what we can uh, try to get done. Uh, within the parameters, uh, you know, understanding what the county and town are comfortable with uh, and also looking at the right-of-way considerations uh, and the amount of funding that is available. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, very much. Okay, with that, that does conclude our presentation. So we now want to hear from you, those of you that have joined us this evening. If you have questions or comments, we certainly would welcome them. Um, as a reminder to post a question, please utilize the Q&A function in your Zoom webinar panel. 
um, and just simply type in your question. You can also use the raise hand feature. Uh, we would ask that you please state your name and your question. Um, Andrew will let you into the, the webinar and then we will, um, we will disable um, your, your, uh, your audio once you have asked your question so that we can move on to the next individual uh, who has a question. You certainly can come back and ask more questions after we've gone through and given everybody a chance to, to ask their questions. I do wanna point out um, that we do have several questions coming in. So if you could please be patient as we are um, facilitating those questions. Um, you also following this evening's webinar, a quick reminder, this is being recorded so that you can um, view this on uh, uh, the DCTC website. You can also email comments following this webinar to dctc at duchessny.gov. And with that, I am going to uh, stop sharing screens so that we can go uh, to the full panel. And um, Andrew, if you would like to, uh, please start um, and ask our first question. Sure. So we do have a few questions that have come in. Um, a few from, uh, let's see, our first question here is from Eero Veitkes, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, do non-roundabout plans for Grand for Grand Intersection include room for a car to pass on the right of a westbound vehicle waiting to turn left onto Grand. Okay, Andrew, I think I'm gonna ask you to repeat that again um, so that we can make sure that we've got that question understood. And then I might turn that over to Chad to help address. Could you please repeat so that question? Do non-roundabout plans for Grand Intersection include room for a car to pass on the right of a westbound vehicle waiting to turn left onto Grand? For the signal, the yep. signalized? For the signalized intersection north and south Grand. Uh, at this time, what we're showing is, is no, because the traffic analysis didn't show that we needed dedicated turn lanes. The, the volumes don't warrant a dedicated turn lane. Um, and also to allow for better safety or better safety for the pedestrians. That's why we've added the curb extensions to help shorten those crossings. Thank you, Chad. Um, any, any other panelists like to add to that? Okay. Um, thank so you, the Andrew. Next, yep. have the next, next, next question uh, is also from uh, Eero. Um, are the lanes wide enough to allow a car to pass a slow moving bicycle in the same lane? Or should bicycles use sidewalks in this area? Okay, I'm gonna direct that to Chad for the first part of that. And then I think there are um, several of us on the panel that can address the, the second part as well. Yeah, yeah, the 11 and 12 foot lanes that are currently shown uh, would not allow for that to happen. Uh, unfortunately, in an area built up like this, it really presents some challenges with what we can fit in the corridor itself. Um, so at this time, no, there they wouldn't be able, they wouldn't be able to pass a, a slow moving bicycle in the lane. Okay. Um, Mark or Emily or, or Dylan, would you like to add to that um, and, and address that with regard to the bicycling? Sure, I can add a little bit. I mean, legally, a bicycle is a vehicle. And the idea of these um, concepts is that this is a shared street. So part of what we're trying to do here is slow down some of the speeds um, by narrowing the traffic lanes, adding those curb extensions, creating a more intimate feel on Main Street. And the idea there is that when you slow down the traffic speeds, there's fewer conflicts between people who might be riding bikes and people who might be driving. So we don't encourage people to ride on sidewalks. It's, um, it's not illegal per se. It's in New York State's vehicle and traffic code It's up to the municipality and the town currently does not have any prohibition on that, but it's not recommended for safety reasons. It's actually less safe to be riding on a sidewalk because of the number of intersections and driveways, particularly on this corridor. Um, as you probably know, there's a lot of um, multiple driveways as you go along. So riding on the sidewalk is really not a great option. What we'd prefer to see is the shared lane. And that's why we've done the sharrows and the signage to really encourage everyone um, to be driving a little more slowly, carefully, and sharing the road. Thank you, Emily. 
Okay, Andrew, what, uh, is there another question? Yep, so next question is from Melissa uh, and she's asking how much will it cost to taxpayers? Okay, I think um, I'll start with that question and then uh, perhaps Mark, maybe you would like to, to help address that um, as well. Um, at this point, uh, we have not yet prepared uh, preliminary cost estimates for the preferred concept. We wanted to hear from the, from the public and the community, but as part of this study, we will identify preliminary concepts for this preferred, uh, I'm sorry, preliminary cost estimates for this preferred concept to have an idea of what this would cost to implement. Um, as Mark had indicated, um, that information will then be shared with the town as well as the county and other stakeholders to seek uh, grant funding to assist in the, the design and the implementation of this. Um, Mark, uh, would you like to, to take it from there in terms of what that might be at that point in time? Sure. And so the, um, I guess the ultimate cost to taxpayers uh, would depend, but Certainly, if we used these federal funds to uh, implement this project, typically those federal funds use what we call an 80% federal uh, portion and a 20% local match. So 80% of the project would be funded by the federal government uh, through federal highway funds. Uh, however, that 20% local match can actually be lower because the New York State Department of Transportation actually adds uh, state funds uh, to help with that local match. So ideally, uh, you know, the project would only cost, say, the local sponsor, that could be the county or town or and or town, uh, county and or town, uh, that would be about 5% of the total project cost, which is um, typically uh, the, you know, the target that we aim for for these types of projects. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. So we have uh, our next question is from Russo uh, and Russo actually has two questions. So one, um, I'll ask both and then if you need, I can repeat them. One, are you proposing a middle lane divider throughout Main Street or just on parts by, around, by roundabout? And two, are proposed roundabouts mountable to accommodate tractor trailers? Okay, thank you, Andrew. I'll start with the first part and then um, Chad, if you would like to uh, mm -hmm. address and, and then I would also invite DCTC. Um, the middle lane divider as, as uh, was mentioned in the question would uh, really only apply to the uh, approaches at the proposed roundabout at North and South Grand and Main Street as well as what could be called a, a, a pedestrian island, if you will, at the intersection of Taft, Fairmont, and Main Street. And it's just those key areas um, uh, to really help guide and direct traffic, as well as to create a more uh, uh, a safer and, and more visible location for the pedestrians to be um, within that area. So it, it does not go uh, the full length of Main Street at this point in time. Um, Chad, I don't know if you wanted to, to add into that and then talk about the, the tractor trailer portion as well. Yes, Jackie. Um, yeah, you hit it right on with the uh, with the middle with the middle lane dividers. The the raised islands would only be at the approaches to um, the Grand Avenue roundabout and also the Taft Fairmont intersection on the west approach. Um, tractor trailers would be able to uh, travel through the preferred roundabout that we have shown. Um, that's why we provide the truck apron in the center. Uh, we haven't looked at that in particular, but we definitely can make that work and, and modify the radiuses um, as necessary to make sure they are accommodated. Any additions from the, the panel with regard to those questions? I don't think so. Great. So moving on to our next question, we have a question from John Vincitori. Are you addressing landscaping, green areas, benches, et cetera? Sure. I will, I will start with that. Um, and then certainly anyone on the panel can, can add to that. Um, yes, that buffer strip that Chad had identified in that last image of the preferred concept is the location to accommodate additional uh, street trees, um, uh, 
perhaps plantings, uh, what we're calling uh, pedestrian amenities, streetscape amenities, such as benches, trash receptacles, uh, uh, pedestrian scaled lighting, um, those types of amenities, that's where, uh, that's the location for those. And so yes, this does contemplate that throughout the corridor um, and they would be consistent uh, in design throughout the corridor. In addition to that, uh, as we had coordinated with uh, the county, uh, those uh, several of those elements will be clustered at key locations throughout the corridor, as Chad had indicated, to make it easier for snow removal. Uh, we do live in the Northeast and snow does happen. And unfortunately, it's probably gonna happen sooner than, uh, um, than, than later at this point. So we want to make sure that what is being considered for this preferred concept is, is implementable. Um, and can be maintained over the long term. And so uh, we are recommending clustering some of those elements at key locations. That's what we have for, um, for some of those streetscape elements. Any, any other uh, members of the panel uh, would like to, if you'd like to add, please feel free. All right. So moving on to our next question, we have a question from George Finn. How does the non-roundabout plan at the main and Taft intersections slow down vehicles less and lessen the number of high-speed accidents? Okay, um, yeah, great question. And that is a, a location where there, uh, we did in our existing conditions see a significant number of, of crashes um, uh, that were documented there. Chad, would you like to walk through sure. uh, what, that, what those improvements to that intersection yep. will do? Um, so a few things that we've done at this intersection were control some of the access at this intersection location. Um, we recommend to remove the access to the gas station that outlets right into the middle of the intersection um, and also restrict the access to the plaza that has the plaza next to McDonald's um, so that that's not as wide. It doesn't outlet people right into the intersection as well. Um, as well as limit some of the access to the cleaners on the cor on the uh, on the southwest corner as well, or southwest corner cur as well. Um, that, in addition to the curb extensions, will have a more restricted area for vehicles to travel through, and that will assist in helping slow vehicles down as well, as well as. Uh, Reducing the lane widths down to 11 feet will also have that uh, that same calming effect that that Emily mentioned earlier. Andrew, was that directed toward the Taft Fairmont intersection as well? That question. Uh, the main and Taft. Oh, okay. main and Taft. I'm, I apologize. So, so for that, uh, Chad was just describing the benefits <laughs> of the uh, North South Grand yeah. and Main Street intersection, but I do believe the question was for the. No problem, Chad. Yes. You got it all. You, <laughs> yeah. No one needed to ask that next question. I apologize. <laughs> so the yeah, so it was for the non-roundabout plan. How how it would slow right. down vehicles and lessen the number of high-speed Fairmont. Accidents. Yeah, Taft and Fairmont. So um, the raised island on the west side would help to restrict travel through there. Um, we'd like to. It would help slow down some of the turning vehicles because they would have to maneuver around that raised island. Um, as well and with some signal timing adjustments and also allowing pedestrians that the refuge on uh the west side that will that will also help with some of the safety aspects um for for pedestrians as, as well as vehicles and something else too chad i know that we've talked quite a bit about is the earlier notification for motorists as they're approaching that intersection through additional signage yes. to know which lane as a motorist you need as a driver you you should be getting into so that can avoid some of those last minute um oh i'm gonna miss my uh you know i'm gonna miss where i need to be and um, and causing some confusion and potential uh, you know potential collisions and, and conflicts rather um, in that area. So that's something else. It, it might seem like a minor uh, element, but but giving uh, earlier notification opportunities for motorists does help um, in that regard as well. Jackie, could I just add something to that? Um, 
This intersection, similar to Raymond, is controlled by New York State DOT. And um, we, uh, New York State DOT is required to consider a roundabout option when they do any improvements to an intersection. So if this, um, this would be up to New York State DOT's evaluation, but that roundabout concept is something that we would like DOT to consider because it does have significant safety benefits. Thank you. Other comments from the, the panel? Okay. Okay, Andrew, what's the next question? Okay, so our next question is from Russo. I would like to know what exactly you are proposing on the two existing entrances to Valero stations. So that is at the Fowler app, I believe. Correct. It's right across from Fowler. Mm -hmm. So um, the preferred concept, again, similar to what we were uh, looking at at Grand Avenue, um, we would limit the access location across from Fowler Avenue. Uh, they have access onto, um, onto Van Wagner as well as Main Street and, and two access points would, would uh, should serve this property um, sufficiently. Um, so that would that would help to you know again reduce access points along Main Street and and um, where movements might not otherwise be anticipated by other drivers along the corridor. Jackie, sorry, just to add one other to that, the idea with um, having that mid-block crossing near Fowler. If you have two access points um, into the gas station on the north side, right near that crosswalk that could create some dangerous um, situations for people in the crosswalk versus cars turning in and out. So the existing gas station has the three entrances, um, two on Main and one on Van Wagner. So simply removing one of those on Main Street would help really improve the safety for that mid-block crosswalk. Thank you, Emily. Okay. Looks like, like we have one more question here from Drew, Drew Angelo. Will there be more street parking or less? Okay, I'll, I'll start with that. Um, currently, as part of the existing conditions, there are no delineated on street parking spaces. Um, and so it's, it's a little challenging to, to determine um, exactly how many spaces there are there. Generally, in our experience, when you do have delineated on-street parking, you can have more, uh, 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 more parking available. Uh, folks are parking within uh, the range that they need to park within, and you can fit more cars in uh, properly. That's, that's you know, practically the experience that, that we have had uh, with regard to parking. Um, one of the things that we were very careful of as we went through this process and hearing from members of the community as well as the business improvement district was how important maintaining the on-street parking was. Um, and so we did our best to try to maintain that as much as possible, um, recognizing that there still is a need to accommodate transit um, and transit stops through this, uh, through this corridor. And so um, where there might be some parking spaces that, um, uh, might not be available in the future, it's to accommodate that transit um, and those transit stops. Um, that's my initial response to that question. Um, Chad or any other panelists, I'm not sure if you have anything else you would like to add with regard to the parking question. Yeah, this is Mark. I would just, well, I, I re would reinforce what Jackie has said that uh, right now, since on-street parking is not delineated, uh, it may not be used to its maximum potential. And so uh, by delineating that parking, uh, it's our expectation that in, in theory or in uh, pract uh, practical application, on-street parking might actually increase. And I'll just add that the existing conditions analysis did look at parking and did an inventory. And if you're interested, you can go to the project website on, um, if you search the Dutchess County website for Transportation Council, we can put this in the um, notes as well. Um, we have an existing conditions report and there was an evaluation of the existing parking 
um, which estimated about 115 spaces just based on the total length and the average length of a parking space. So that's an estimate. Um, we don't actually have the number, I think, with a preferred concept, but that would be something good to know. Yep. Um, but generally, the parking is actually fairly underutilized. There's not, um, based on the observations that, that we did, there's not um, as much parking being used as you might expect. So I think part of it is um, there is some availability to have um, to accommodate more parking just within what's there now. If we have a more vibrant corridor, the hope is that people would park once walk around and explore, uh, explore the corridor as opposed to what people do now where they park, go into a shop, get back in their car, drive another block, get out. So you actually might be able to use uh, less parking overall if you have a more vibrant kind of walkable um, main street. Thanks, Emily. Thank you. Okay, are there um, so, additional questions, Andrew? Yep, so we have another question coming in from Eero uh, Vapkes. And again, I apologize for any mispronunciations. Will the parking be free? Will limitations such as allowed time to park exist? Okay, at this point in time, there have been no discussions of paid parking for this particular area. Um, and that is not something that is being contemplated as part of this study. With regard to limitations on the time allowed, um, that would be something that we would, um, I would look to the town and or county to be able to address in terms of, of time limitations. At this point for this study, there is not any recommendations for that beyond what uh, you know, the community may look to, um, to implement for that. I don't know if there are any uh, any any other panel panel members or uh, study committee members that would like to um, address that question about the time limitations. No, I think Jackie, your answer is appropriate. Uh, we you know, we just don't know at this time, you know, whether parking management would be needed and um, and what that would look like. So I think you know um, it, that's question for a future time, really. Thank you, Mike. Cool. Okay. Other questions, Andrew? So that is all of our questions, uh, unless anyone else has anything else to add. Okay. All right. I'd like to offer an opportunity for any of the, the study committee, um, advisory committee uh, members, if there's anything you would like to add um, at this point. Please feel free. Well, this is Mark again. I would just, you know, um, you know, we are excited uh, at the DCTC to uh, potentially have something work here along Main Street. You know, it is a county highway, uh, but it really functions as a town road. And so it is a unique uh, stretch of road in the county system. And so I think uh, we've got a, a workable solution here. Uh, it will require some outside funding uh, but, you know, one of the points, main reasons we do these types of studies is to build the case uh, to say New York State DOT, who would be managing uh, the, the funding stream for this, to make that case that, hey, uh, the county and town have worked together. Uh, we've got a great consultant team that's helped us out, to, you know, with a design concept. So we've thought this out uh, and hopefully we can make the case uh, to leverage this study to uh, secure funding. Yeah. Hi, this is Ann Shershen here. I think one of the goals of this all along is to make this more of a vibrant corridor and to match the Raymond Avenue. And we hope to more or less have the same success on, on Main Street as we have had on Main and be attractive to more commercial businesses and just make it more vibrant and more people shopping there. And with the comment made before about taxes, this also helps the tax base because when these properties get fixed up and are utilized more, it just uh, makes them more valuable and then it increases the tax base. So it really, it does help all of us out. So yeah, I'm really excited and hope to see this move forward. The only thing I want to add to that, Ann, and I think you're absolutely right, um, is, you know, in, at the town, we've been seeing a lot of interest, um, you know, I would say an increased interest on, on Main Street uh, for, 
you know, redevelopment and also uh, for some projects that would include some residential on, on the upper stories and, and so on, which, uh, you know, all those things taken together, I think, you know, bode well for the future of Main Street uh, as a real, you know, downtown uh, for the town of Poughkeepsie. And, and um, um, so, you know, we're really excited about it at the town uh, as well and, and appreciate working with the county on this project. Uh, and, uh, you know, I guess the next steps would, you know, was, as we get our report put together, of course, we'll be uh, searching, searching for the money and uh, looking for, you know, the, some uh, help with the, that investment from the state and the federal government. And uh, I think this report really puts us in a good position to uh, take that next step. So thank you for that. Hi, Jackie, it's Kristen. Um, I know you can't see me, but I just wanted to make a quick plug just because I know that Anne is a part of the task force and I know that there might be at least one member or two um, still in attendance this evening, but uh, the, the town of Poughkeepsie has actually taken a Climate Smart um, Communities Pledge as well and uh, we're, we're um, fast and hard at work um, working our way through the checklist and I uh, just wanted to make a, a quick plug and, and let some of the members who might be listening in uh, know that you know, I've definitely been pushing and, and we've had a discussion with Mark and of course DCTC and, and the whole team here has been completely receptive to uh, including any um, climate smart related elements as they may be applicable to this corridor as well. And, and even if it's just including some language, um, it definitely bodes well. It could help with possible future funding. Um, so just wanted to make the plug. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. Other comments from the uh, advisory committee? Okay. All right, and um, Andrew, it doesn't look like we've gotten any additional uh, questions in during that time, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Well, with that, um, uh, we uh, have no more questions and we would, uh, of course, encourage you if you have additional comments after the webinar this evening, to email those to dctc at duchessny.gov. Um, and with that, we will close our webinar and thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And thank you again to the study advisory committee for all of your efforts throughout this project, uh, throughout this study. Um, thank you all and have a good evening. <laughs>